Hello everybody and welcome to this demo and introduction of Grafana Villa. To demonstrate the capabilities of auto-instrumentation, I will show an example of a distributed application. In this application, the user can access to a front-end and can ask for a number and the application will calculate the factorial for that number. It's a huge factorial calculator. So how is this application composed? Uh, despite Grafana Villa works in uh, any kind of environment, as a host process, as a container, we are using Kubernetes to demonstrate it. So this application is composed by a front-end service. That is what you already said. This front-end is sending HTTP requests to a back-end service, and this back-end service is splitting the task in multiple jobs and sending them to a worker via gRPC. You can see that there is a front-end pod, a back-end pod, and three worker pods that share the load. A part of that, we are deploying a load generator Plot pod that is just asking for numbers to the to the front end in order to generate some some load and have some traces to go. Uh, those those services are uninstrumented. That means that we have no visibility of what's going on, rather than the actual logs of the pod if we look them in the console. So instead of instrumenting them manually with using the as for example the services are written in go instead of using the go sdk to insert pros manually we would like to get uh, uh, some some metrics and and spans uh, without having to modify our application so we can use grafana villa to instrument everything uh, Grafana Villa, as I said before, it can be deployed as a single process, as a container. We can deploy it as a sidecar container attached to each pod. So Grafana Villa would instrument each pod separately, one instance per pod. But we can also deploy Grafana Villa as a daemon set. So in, as a daemon set, we will get a Villa instance per host and this Villa instance will inspect for all the processes that are instrumentable. We could say Grafana Villa to uh, look for all the processes in the system, but that will also make us instrument some parts of, for example, the Kubernetes uh, subsystem that we don't want to instrument. Then uh, we can pass a configuration file to Grafana Villa in which we select which executables we want to instrument and uh, giving them also extra metadata. For example, using a regular expression for the executable path of every service, you can say that all the services named worker, backend, and frontend, uh, or matching this regular expression, will be moved to a namespace not a Kubernetes namespace, but a namespace in the application observability plugin of Grafana. Then, for example, we can move this load generator for another namespace, and even we can overwrite the service name. If we don't overwrite the service name, Grafana will use the executable name. So the worker backend and frontend services will be reported with worker backend and frontend service names. We can also provide extra information. Grafana Villa doesn't need any configuration file. It, does, it only needs a, an endpoint where to expose the metrics, and it will do the rest automatically. But we can give any extra configuration or any hints to improve the quality of the metrics. For example, the factorial service can receive uh, the request via uh, a URL uh, in which the, has the factorial as a first directory in the path and then the number to calculate. We can tell Villa to group those 
uh, HTTP request paths into uh, the same root group. In that case, it will be factorial and no, it will be re the root group will be reported as this, and, and and we won't have. If we look for root, we can look for this factorial slash num. We don't need to look for all the different kinds of roots you could get. We can also provide some sampling information uh, for the traces in order to avoid sending too many traces and get our costs too high. I'm, I'm sampling 1% of the traces, basically because this load generator is generating a lot of load. I would like, I would like that my Grafana bill goes uh, too expensive. And we can also tell what kind of data we want to submit via open telemetry. It can be metrics or traces or both in that case. To submit Grafana Villa as a demo set in that case, we only need to attach the Villa container. We are providing this configuration file I showed before. This configuration file is just provided as a config map. So we can add this command with an, with an argument. Uh, and it's important that the container is run as a privileged container because Grafana Villa uses eBPF and uh, eBPF, uh, loading eBPF programs in the kernel requires some privileges. Also, this is this is not mandatory if you are deploying Grafana as a sidecar container, but if you are deploying it as a daemon set, you need Grafana to access the host PID namespace. Why? Because Grafana needs to be able, in that case, to look for all the processes, to search in all the processes in a given host in order to uh, instrument them. And then, a part of that, we can provide all the configuration we saw previously can be also provided via environment variables. Uh, but in this case, I'm only uh, leaving as environment variables the Grafana Cloud Zone. This is the Cloud Zone where my Grafana OTLP collector, Open Telemetry Collector, is installed. And my Grafana credentials is the Cloud Instance ID and the Cloud API key, which for obvious reasons I'm not showing here and I just deployed as a Kubernetes secret. Then let's deploy the Villa Diamond Set. Let's see the logs. We see the logs of Villa. These logs uh, show that everything worked correctly. You can see how it is finding some processes. For example, it found this process uh, with this given command line and this given PID, the load generator, and the multiple worker instances, as well as the front end and the back end process. Then let's move to Grafana. Uh, one easy way to start visualizing the data of Villa is using the dashboard we provide. So you can look for the Villa Red Metrics dashboard. Here, copy the ID into the clipboard. And then in our Grafana dashboard section, you can import it and copy the ID and load it. I need to select my Prometheus data source. Okay, I import and um, you can see here all the services I have, the backend and the test load generator, the worker. So, and you can see the inbound traffic. This is the traffic it receives and the outbound traffic. That means the traffic that the service does as a client. So you can instrument either services and clients. You get also the slowest HTTP routes and RPC methods, and you can filter by service, also even by instance. To get also a complete experience with Villa, you can make use of our application observability product. As long as we are sending traces, 
you can enter the application observability and you will see here all our services the back end the front end the worker the load generator and you can see extra data about them it's similar information but more complete similar to what we saw previously in the dashboard then you can get the duration you can get the errors uh, observe that there are some errors. Those errors are introduced in purpose into the demo application just to show some information here. And also you can see the traces. You go into the traces and you will see a list of traces. You will see here that the name of the trace follow the root pattern we defined previously. That way you can group all the similar traces under the same name. When you click, also there's an interesting part here that is possible thanks to eBPF. When you create a trace, you can see the, the overall data of this HTTP trace, but you can see also how much time this trace has been in the queue. In the queue means since the request has been received, until the request has been dispatched internally by our Go runtime or, or the Go web framework. In that case, the in-queue time is very small because uh, despite uh, the CPU load is high for this application, there are not so many requests per second, but in some scenarios with many requests per second, this in-queue could uh, grow a lot and could affect the overall response time of your application. You might think that the code is slow, but maybe it's just that it has been enqueued. This is not usually possible with other types of instrumentation, but with Vila it's possible because eBPF is observing some internal connectivity and enqueuing behavior that cannot be manually instrumented, but uh, can be observed with eBPF. Thank you very much for your attention and see you for the next demo.